Ah, welcome back. It's time to do some more problems. But before we do that, uh, I was watching, or I was actually playing back my last video, and uh, I realized there was a tapping noise throughout the entire video. I was trying to figure out what that was. Um, I think it has to do with my tablet. I think it's hitting my laptop as I write on it. But uh, apologies for that. I hope it, uh, I hope it doesn't happen in this video. And uh, the other thing I, I realized was at the end of the, the video, things got kind of out of sync. So hopefully I can find a way to fix that. You know, this whole thing's a work in progress, so uh, so bear with me. All right, problem number five. Now, problem number five, it looks like they have a, have a chart. So I'm just going to recreate the chart here. Now, it says payroll at company X. And on the left, they have the employees. And on the right, they have their salary. So I'm just going to represent it with that money sign. On the left, it's got four or five, four, eight, and three. And on the right, it says uh, 20,000. Wow, these people are severely underpaid. 22,000, 25,000, 30,000. All right. And uh, the problem says the table above shows the number of employees at each of four salary levels at company X. What is the average, arithmetic mean, salary for the 20 employees? Now, quick recap. Mean. What is a mean? A mean means uh, if you had a, you know, let's say you had four numbers. Let's say you had a two, a two, a three, and a six. Mean is asking what is the average? What is, what is the, uh, the number in between? Or, or what happens if you add all these up and you divided them evenly amongst four people, you know, these numbers. Uh, so you have two, two, three, six, that would be nine, 11, 13. And then you divide that by the number of uh, entities or the number of people, that would be four. And so 13 over fourths would be the mean. So here, you're basically gonna be doing the same thing with these employees. Uh, the difference is that uh, there are a lot of them. And so the calculations are gonna be quite big. But luckily, there are a few shortcuts that you can use to make this a lot more manageable. I mean, it would be a nightmare if you had to do 20, you had, if you had to create an equation where it was 20,000 plus 20,000 plus 20,000 plus 22,000 plus 22,000. I mean, you would spend five minutes on this problem. And obviously, these uh, GMAT problems are designed so that you don't ever spend more than two minutes uh, on a problem. If you are spending more than two minutes, either you're doing it wrong or uh, you haven't noticed the shortcut. So let me just drag this down here a little bit. And let's get started. Now, the problem does tell you that there's 20 employees. We could have figured this out by just adding all these up, but it's nice that they told us. All right, let's start. So what you want to see, uh, what, the first thing you should notice is that there are five employees that are making 20,000, four employees making 22,000. So there's going to be some multiplication here. Uh, the other thing you notice is that 20 with three zeros at the end, I mean, you can kind of shorten that to 20K. If you don't want to write the zeros out every single time, um, call it 20k and it makes it easier to, to actually do the calculations. So let's set up the equation. You have five employees making 20k. And then you got four employees making 22k. And you have eight employees making 25k. And you have, what else? Three employees making 30k. Oh, these poor underpaid souls. All right, and all over 20. So what you want to do here is you just need to crunch these numbers and figure out the answer. So let's do that. All right. 5 times 20, 100. Plus 4 times 22, that's 88K. Plus 8 times 25, that's 0. So 200K. Plus 3 times 30K. 90k. All right, uh, and all over 20. Do not forget that. Let's add these up. 100, 200, that's 300, plus 90, that's 390k, plus 88k for 20, and that equals, well, pretty much uh, 8, 478k over 20, that's 478 over 20 
erase the zero here, erase the zero here, and then let's do some division. Zero, zero, two, four, zero, seven. That goes into it three times. Oops, I got a six down here. One, eight, nine, and the rest are zeros. So the answer is two, oops, two, three, nine, zero, zero. And that is answer C. That was kind of a long problem. Hopefully, uh, it shouldn't take you longer than two minutes to figure out. All right, moving on to question number six. They say a case contains C cartons, and each carton contains, oops, it's an arrow for contains, contains B boxes, and each box contains 100 paper clips. And they're asking, how many paper clips are contained in two cases? Hmm, you might be looking at this and you know, it, it takes a while to, to, to try to figure out uh, what, what exactly they're asking. But you have to remember that, that when they say C cartons, that C represents uh, that C actually represents a number. So when they say C cartons, uh, we have to kind of figure out what exactly uh, that number is, or at least the relationship between C and P. So let's uh, let's figure this out. So we know that one case contains C cartons. So what would two cases contain? Two cases would contain two C cartons. One carton contains B boxes. So two C cartons would contain two C B boxes. We know one box contains 100p, so two CB boxes would contain 100 times two CB boxes, or paper uh, clips. I think that's what they were asking. Yes, paper clips. And they're asking, uh, how many paper clips? So P equals 100 times two times CB. 2 times 100 is 200 CB. And that is answer C. So that is the answer. Now, I went through this kind of fast. Um, it can be a little confusing because of all the variables. But uh, uh, let me just uh, really quickly explain what I did here in case uh, it was confusing. Because the first time I saw this problem, I was actually pretty confused. And it took me a while to figure out what to do. Um, now it's saying here that one case equals C cartons. The C actually represents a number. You can actually just plug in your own number. It doesn't really matter as long as you can check your answer at the end. But um, you have to kind of think abstractly and pretend that C is a number. Uh, if one case equals C cartons and one carton equals C boxes, and let's say one case equals two cartons, then one carton equals two boxes, or B boxes, then two cartons would equal two B boxes, correct? So because two equals C, one carton equals CB boxes. And so you use that kind of logic to basically go through the steps, get from cases to cartons, from cartons to boxes, and from boxes to paper clips. And that is how we get 200 CB. If you were to plug in numbers, what you can do is you can then check your answer uh, to, with each of the answer choices. And uh, uh, the nice thing about that is you can just plug in what A and B is to each of the answer choices, and by the time you get to C, uh, you'll see that 200 times B times C, whatever your numbers are, would equal exactly what you got in the problem above. All right. Let's move on to question number seven. Now, question number seven is saying the sum of prime numbers that are greater than 60, so they're greater than 60, uh, but less than 70, what is the sum of these prime numbers? Well, let's uh, let's list all the numbers and figure out which ones are prime. Uh, quick recap: What is a prime? A prime number means it is a number that can only be divided by itself and one. So right off the bat, we see the even numbers. All of these can be divided by two. So let's get rid of them. So it's not sixty-two, not sixty-four, not sixty-six, not sixty-eight. We know that anything that ends in a 5 can be divided by 5, 
so it's not that. So we're down to here, 63, what goes into 63? 7 times 9 is 63, so we know that's not it either. 69 can be divided by 3, so it's not that. So it looks like we're left with 61 and 67. Let's add them together. 8, 12, 128. And that is answer B. Boom, I think, I think we're good. All right, next video will be question eight. Stay tuned.